The Morgan Report with David Morgan. This is David Smith with the Weekly Perspective. And in July 10th, David Morgan is in Mexico this week. We have uh, quite a bit going on this week as per usual. Um, the stock market was a little on the quiet side, but uh, technical traders, NASDAQ, was strong. Uh, the broader market being led by the fangs uh, kind of lagging behind, uh, but not too much action there. Uh, as regular listeners probably should realize, there's a lot of risk here. A lot of people think we're going to see new highs imminently. And th at the same point, uh, we're at the point of a lot of resistance and we could see a turn down, which actually might affect the metals too. And that's why David Morgan has been a little bit cautious about recommending people go all in right here because not only the stock market itself is in resistance area, but so are the uh, gold and silver mining stocks as well too. Uh, gold closed above $800 uh, dollars for most of this week, which is very uh, positive development. Uh, silver stayed above 19 on Friday. Uh, this is a smaller development, but it's the first of several resistance layers that silver has needed in order to successfully attack it, uh, the prices on the way up to $26. We'll just have to see how that uh, turns out. Uh, the um, SLV uh, depositories have been continuing to uh, set new records. So a lot of big money is going in and smaller money too, is going into the silver ETFs. And this is supportive of an eventual breakout, which could happen soon, or it could happen a month or two from now. But this, this fall, certainly late summer and early fall, looks to be an exciting uh, possibility for those who are uh, interested in this sector. I'd like to mention, uh, something that is kind of time sensitive. Uh, there's a virtual sprout symposium July 22nd and 25th. And this is a four day extravaganza with some of the best speakers literally in the sector in the world. I got to attend this last year in Vancouver, but this year it's virtual. Uh, I myself have been honored with uh, asked to be doing a presentation uh, there. I don't include myself in the category that I just mentioned but I'm gonna be talking about some of the things that uh, I think would, people will find relevant, not only Morgan subscribers, but also people that listen to the free weekly that we have here. And if you would like a link for that, to sign up for that, it does cost $299, but you have access to it as a attendee for all of the talks until the end of this year. And it would cost you 900 to show up in person plus the expense of staying in a Vancouver hotel and lodging and everything else. So it is quite a deal. And I personally intend to listen to every one of those people who are presenting because one idea will pay for that many times what you would spend to sign up for it. Another thing that you might want to hear is uh, I was interviewed by uh, Dunnigan Kaiser in Liberty and Finance this week. And the topic that I had, this is on YouTube now, is that we are in the early rounds of a massive metals bull market. And I think you might find a few tidbits there which will inform your thinking as well too. Also, Dunnigan interviews uh, Andy Sheckman of Miles Franklin. Um, he interviews Doug Casey, Martin Katusa, Ross Beatty and others, all of whom will be presenting at the uh, Virtual Sprout Symposium. One of the things that was uh, quite interesting, I thought fascinating was that uh, Andy Sheckman, who was really one of the most plugged in people in the metal sector, was talking about how the COMEX has turned into a delivery mechanism, whereas historically it had been where almost all of the contracts at the end of the, of the given uh, futures month are rolled over. So essentially it was a paper exchange operation. But now more and more of these contract holders are standing for physical delivery. And as Andy says, quote, it's kind of like calling your bluff. If you're on the short side of that market, when it goes from a hypothetical delivery situation to quote, and I want it in my pocket, things are gonna change very, very quickly. He says, I've never seen a situation like this before and where it's being dominated by physical delivery. And he says, I believe it portrays much higher silver prices going forward. This is real, end quote. The, on the domestic uh, scene, the domestic stats of unemployment, and the effect of COVID-19 are pretty much opaque. You get different views from the government and from other people that look at things a little bit differently, counting the numbers differently. But, you know, this is something that is going to be with us for a while. 
uh, to think that we're going to just come out of this in a couple of months and everything will be back to normal this fall is really, uh, in our view, is really not the way to be looking at it. There are some systemic issues and damage that have been done to the global and the domestic uh, economy. And these things are going to take a long time, perhaps years in some ways, according to Jim Rickards and others, to sort themselves out. And it's best to play defense rather than trying to go all in, whether it's in the metals and miners or the broad stock market, thinking everything is going to be okay. However, having said that, the metals and miners are likely to be more positively uh, affected, even if we have a, a, you know, a retracement in here, than will the, the broad stock market, because the risk faced by the metals and miners is of a different order of magnitude and for different uh, reasons than that of the domestic market. The um, SLV update, which we talked about, this is kind of an interesting as an aspect of that, of the silver depositories that continue to set records. JP Morgan is actually one of the backstoppers of the um, ETF S SLV. And they're being investigated, and not for the first time, by the SEC regarding their silver trading practices. And there are other allegations that have gone back really almost to the first of this last uh, current decade and beyond where. Uh, they have been investigated by the SEC and on several cases have paid fines in, a, in the amount of hundreds of millions of dollars for such things as failing to disclose the conflict of interest that they have with their clients, such as routing them into funds, which made payments back to JP Morgan for affiliates for getting the business. So uh, this, this could be the biggest thing yet if it turns out that they have to kind of get out of the silver business. We don't know how that's going to look or how long it's going to take to, take to play out, but uh, things could happen which could really cause an explosive upside move in silver would not be all that surprising. doesn't mean to go all in, but it does mean to uh, be aware that a lot of rumblings are going on under the surface, which I would call volcanic tremors. And if we get some kind of a breakout where something like this changes the game, it could become a pyrotechnic explosion not only for silver itself, but for the mining stocks in general. Another thing you should be aware of, and it's kind of comical, it would be comical in the way if it wasn't that it has real world consequences for some of the newbies that are getting involved in the stock market itself. Um, Robinhood is a, uh, is a uh, free, supposedly free commission service where you can uh, open an account, and you don't need a KYC, know your customer uh, thing to be filled out. And um, a lot of millennials are getting into this um, in a way that is probably pretty dangerous to them. Uh, Marin Katusa calls it robbing from the poor to give to the ultra rich. And what's happening is that all you, the average balance, if you can believe this, at Robin Hood is about $2,000. Many of these are millennials. Some of them opened their account with the $1,200 and a little bit more that the government gave most many of us earlier in the year to help us get through COVID-19. If you compare this with some other trading services, this is an interesting shocker. E-Trade, the, uh, the average trade there, which is a discount brokerage house, is $69,000. Morgan Stanley, $900,000. So these people are going in and they're doing a lot of um, options trading, which is about as dangerous as it can get. And there's already been one casualty, a very sad story of an individual who opened his account, I guess, with 2000, ended up uh, owing 120,000 uh, millennial, committed suicide uh, for the, the devastation that it caused him. Very, very sad. Here's the, here's the thing. Robin Hood apparently, uh, for not having any charging any commissions for the trades, sends orders that they get to market makers who then pay them for the business that sends to them. And so that's really how Robinhood makes a lot of their money. So there's no, there's no free lunch, and there certainly isn't in this case. Another strange thing, which was talked about um, on in several sources, including Zero Hedge, is that these uh, these brokerages, which get the business from Robinhood, 
they give they give some of that money back to Robin Hood, of course, as, as a commission, but also they get the free run, free, uh, not not free run, uh, front run. These guys that are coming in with these orders, so they know where the orders are going to go, and they they can choose to buy the item, the stock ahead of these orders coming in, make a little bit of money, and then the the lemons come in with their orders and they pay a higher price. So it's it's pretty pretty sad, and that's not that's not even the whole thing because there's a guy called Davy Day Trader Barstool Bets that you can Google on YouTube. This guy is something else. I mean, we're talking about something that is, you, you can't make this stuff up. Some of his trades that he recommends are to take a bag of, of little uh, chips of, of uh, alphabet chips and, and reach in there and pull out three or four or five of them. And then that turns out to be a stock that's traded on, on an exchange. And he recommends that trade and he's making money on these things. And so are the lemmings that are, are doing it. So. This is going to end in some real tears, but for now, everybody's having a lot of fun. So you just you just can't make this stuff up. But it really shows you how quickly people move into a speculative mode. And this is after just a few months ago, the stock market making the biggest, fastest drop, even bigger than the 1939, um, 1929 crash, which took a couple of decades to work out, and then going back with trillions of Fed uh, infusions of money, uh, the fastest time ever that the stock market ever recovered, and people are getting ready for 30 or 50 or $100,000 Dow like it's written in the rocks. So we're just going to have to see how this all plays out. But uh, I think I've given you some things to chew on today, and um, I'll be back with you next week for another weekly perspective. David Morgan will be at the helm on July 24th. But uh, we'll we'll get some more information your way, and hopefully you've gotten a few things to chew on here, and maybe you'll be a little bit less um, a little bit less risk taking than are the people who trade at Robinhood. So wish you the very best uh, with this weekly perspective.